Today, we're gonna to begin our river scene painting. And with this painting, we're gonna be focusing on our observational skills and the watercolor technique, wet on dry. To be a better painter that makes more painterly painting, you need to develop a good set of observational skills. Developing a painterly vision is not the same as simply opening your eyes and looking around you. Observing with the painter's eye means learning to see what elements make a good painting, a skill that is definitely easier with practice. As an artist, you have the freedom to interpret what you see and express it in your own way. To develop your observational skills, there are four key elements you should look for in potential subjects to paint. And those are shapes, viewpoint, value range, and color. Unusual or dramatic shapes make for an intriguing and very powerful painting. When looking for a subject to paint, it's probably not going to be obvious at first glance. So you have to investigate the angles and heights of various viewpoints. This can completely change how you see an object and reveal the most pleasing shapes. So view a potential subject from all angles before settling on the one that you consider to be the most impactful and interesting. Take this watercolor of rocks. The compositional beauty of this painting lies in the stark, bold shapes presented by the rocks. A very simple way to find the main shapes is to squint your eyes. So go ahead right now, squint your eyes, and you'll notice that by squinting your eyes, it blurs the detail so that the shapes are revealed. Additionally, the rounded shapes of the rocks and the darker value of them create this beautiful stark contrast to the lighter sky, helping them pop forward in the composition. And this brings us to our third and fourth key element you should look for when choosing a potential subject to paint, and that is value range and color. The lightness and darkness of colors gives a painting structure, impact, and a lot of excitement. Therefore, look for subjects with a simple array of a few interesting value shapes, ranging from the lightest of lights to the darkest of darks. This painting is a perfect example on how interesting shapes in a good range of values can make for a great watercolor. Shapes, not things, create a painting. Here, the hand connects to the face to give one large overall arching shape with a lot of really interesting edges. The lighting also emphasizes the value differences. The more dramatic the lighting, the wider range of interesting value shapes you will see in your composition. Now color helps create atmosphere. It's important to practice mixing and painting colors you physically see to improve your color mixing vocabulary. However, it can be equally important to use your imagination to adjust colors to suit the mood that you want to convey in a particular work. And that is exactly what we will be doing for our river scene painting. The colors will be adjusted to create a cool color scheme that includes tints, tones, and hues of blue, green, and purple. This river scene is a great example of good shape, good viewpoints, good value range, and great color. We see this in the curved shape of the river, a contrasting darker value tree, and a huge range of value seen from the lighter trees in the back all the way to the darker grasses in the front. All of these shifts of value and color create a beautiful movement reflected in the water surface. And that's why we're choosing to do this as our first big watercolor painting. So let's learn how to begin this. In your portfolio, find the line drawing of the river scene. Get a sheet of tracing paper and begin tracing over first the edge of the composition and then the detail within the frame. After tracing over your landscape, and you've made sure that you've traced over everything, flip that paper around. And I also recommend flipping your reference photo around so you can see your lines a little bit better. And start tracing everything you've just drawn on the back of the tracing paper. If you're tracing the back side of your tracing paper, line it up with your watercolor paper and paper clip it down in two points to make sure it's not going to move. Begin by tracing around the edge of your landscape and then trace over everything on the inside of that border. Make sure you're tracing directly inside the line and you're being slow and deliberate. 
All of this tracing should be done with a 4H pencil. Using a 4H pencil, make sure that you're not smearing extra graphite onto your watercolor paper because what we don't want to have happen is that graphite mixing with our watercolor and making the watercolor look really dirty and smudgy. The 4-H pencil does not mix with the watercolor and mostly disappears once the watercolor is added over it. So that's why we like to use it whenever we're tracing. And just make sure you've traced everything on before you remove the tracing paper. And that's all you're going to do today is just trace on your landscape onto your final watercolor paper. And after everything is traced, take a picture of your work and submit it into the assignment for today.